Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about plant pesticides and which ones are safe to use and which ones can just be plain dangerous. Houseplant pests can be one of the most annoying things to deal with, but we have to just remember that we're growing just regular old houseplants. I've been dealing with spider mites on my anthuriums and my fuzzy philodendrons for the last few months, and it's been really frustrating. At one of our recent plant shows, I was talking to another plant nerd like myself, and we were talking about different ways to get rid of them. He suggested at the plant show that I try this three-in-one spider mite killer. So I just ordered it off Amazon, not thinking about it. But when it came in, I started doing my research before I used it. This is made by Bayer Advanced, Bayer, like Bayer Aspirin, the pharmaceutical company. That's my first red flag. And then down here in small fine print, I have the active ingredients. Also a good little Thing it says there, not for sale in New York State. That's another sort of red flag for me. Why might that be? So upon doing my research about this product, it is the most commonly used pesticide in the United States and potentially globally. If you've ever heard anything about the honeybee kind of dying off, this is one of the primary causes of that. Back what we're trying to do, we're just trying to grow houseplants for aesthetically pleasing purposes. This isn't to grow food or do anything super special like that. So if that means I can't have anthuriums right now or they're gonna be attacked by spider mites, I kind of say so be it. But there are a bunch of organic methods that yes, aren't as effective as something chemical, but they just work well if you keep applying them repeatedly. The most common pest control I've used over the last 15 years is something called neem oil. A lot of you guys have heard of it. We've talked about it a lot. It contains an active ingredient called azadiractin. When you look at any of these bottles or labels for the pesticides, try and go for something organic and then find the active ingredient and then do a Google search on it. See what comes up. And I know I've done my own personal research on scientific journals that azadiractin is not harmful to humans, mammals, babies, dogs, other uh, insects really and it needs to be applied directly in the insect's mouth or it needs to be on the leaf that that insect will eat. So that's how this targets leaf eaters specifically and it targets a, targets a broad array of different predators for our leaves. And just a side note, as we've said, anthuriums can be trouble, some fuzzy philodendrons, but on the other side, monsteras are like, to me, damn near pest resilient. With the exception of thrips, I've seen thrips once, and you're always gonna fight fungus gnats, but we have something for that too. Another thing to control spider mites, which I would say are the most prevalent and challenging houseplant pest, you might not even know that you have them, are a thing called predatory mites or beneficial insects. There's a bug by the name of Phytocilius that is a little red bug that attacks the spider mites. It actually eats at the spider mites and they come in little sachets. You can buy them on different organic sites to release into your garden. So you put them in little bags. We did it last year. We're gonna do it again here soon. And then you leave them all along and they kind of come out. They don't bother humans, so don't worry about that. And they'll eat at the spider mites kind of without you even seeing. So if you have children at home, pets at home, remember that this is gonna go in our home or in a space that we live in, so we don't wanna use something chemical and harsh. And if you're like most of us, you're always dealing with fungus gnats, so check out Bacillus thuringiensis israelianasis. I probably messed that up. It's the most common thing we use for fungus gnats. It's the only thing we use for fungus gnats. It's actually what the state of Utah uses to control mosquitoes. They put it in planes and dump it out across valleys. It's organic, it comes from the soil. It's naturally soil dwelling and then people manufacture it. And as I said, they fly it up in planes and kind of crop dust big large spaces that tend to have a lot of mosquitoes to control mosquitoes populations. And again, I've done my research on this so I know it is not harmful to humans or pets or anyone like that or really any other insect that is not outside fungus gnats and mosquitoes and a few other flying insects. So safe to use around the house, neem oil safe to use around the house. I really don't suggest using something dangerous but effective like bears three in one. You know, no shade to the guy that suggested me to use this. When I was pouring out a vial of this to show you guys in the video, it literally made me gag. It smells so bad. It smells like serious chemicals. Whereas neem oil, on the other hand, yes, it smells bad. A lot of people complain about the smell. I've sprayed it out here accidentally without a mask and it kind of like goes to the back of your airway and just kind of tastes bad. 
Just be smart about what you're spraying on your plants. It's not worth it to me to use this and have zero spider mites or use this and have maybe a couple. Use your neem oil every three to four days, about twice a week, and then use your BTI to control the fungus gnats. And aside from that, maybe throw in some few predators during the springtime when it's most populous with bugs and you'll be good to go. Thanks you guys so much for watching this week's video. If you did enjoy the video and or learn something new, please click the like button down below. And if you want to come back every Saturday for more videos, click subscribe and we'll see you next Saturday. Thanks so much for watching.